Okay. Well, hey, guys, gals. Turns out Kamala Harris is a Liz Cheney Democrat. I mean, what? Liz Cheney is a Kamala Harris Republican. I mean, what? Oh, yeah. Turns out these two, they're, they're doing a great job. And who, who's who's there to hype it up? Well, Mr. Snuffleupagus himself, Georgie boy. Georgie Snuffleupagus. Take it away, Mr. Snuffleupagus, you Clinton bastard. Donald Trump in Michigan, Kamala Harris in Wisconsin with a special guest. Mary Bruce is on the scene in Green Bay. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Georgia. Kamala Harris will be here in the battleground. Did you call him Georgie? Wait a minute. Good morning, Georgia. Kamala Harris. Sorry, hold on. In Green Bay. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Georgia. Kamala Harris will. <laughs> is that a is, is that a little fun name? Was Georgie? It's George, not Georgie. Well, be here in the battleground state of Wisconsin, the birthplace of the Republican Party today, arguing that the GOP has lost its way. She's trying to make a direct appeal, reaching out to Republicans and independent voters who may feel they don't have a home in Donald Trump's party. And to make that case today, she will be joined for the first time out here on the trail by Liz Cheney. Oh, yeah, because that will bring in the people. Liz Cheney. Woo! Yeah, Lizzie. Dick Cheney's daughter, right? Same Dick Cheney who led us into the war in Iraq. Yeah, that's that's it's a name you could trust because Liz Cheney's there. Brilliant move, Democrats. My God. You know what? I'm willing to bet like the Democratic Party, the strategists are like, hmm, I, I bet I bet if they ever had to play the game, don't crap your pants. They'll crap their pants and still think they won. Once the third highest ranking Republican in Congress, Cheney, of course, went on to chair the committee that investigated the January 6th attack on the Capitol and has become one of the most vocal critics of the former president. And last month, Liz Cheney announced, along with her father, former Vice President Dick Cheney, that she is endorsing Kamala Harris because of the risk, she says, that Donald Trump poses to our democracy. And today I'm told Kamala Harris is really. Oh, it's always the danger to democracy. It's always a danger. Always a danger. We're a constitutional republic. Say that to trigger a liberal. We're going to be leaning into that message, saying that if elected, that she will uphold the Constitution and the rule of law, arguing that Donald Trump simply will not. And in this critical state, she's going to be trying to reach out to voters in a state that is, we know, neck and neck, saying that Republicans may not agree with her on everything, but that the country needs a president who will serve the common good, not his own personal interests, George. They will be amplifying the special counsel's filing. Okay, Mary Bruce, thanks very much, Robin. Yes, yes. All right. Well, well done, Georgie boy. But hey, give it up for Lizzie. L Lizzie herself. Liz, Liz, Liz. Tell the people what is going on. It was that Republican Party, the party of Lincoln and Eisenhower, party of Reagan and Bush. It's the and Bush Jr., where your dad was VP, right? That party that I belonged to my entire life. I volunteered on my first presidential campaign. I already told you how old I am, so I'll tell you. <laughs> in uh, 1976, when I was 10 years old, and I was sealing envelopes for President Ford's reelection campaign, I cast my first vote ever in 1984 for Ronald Reagan. Oh, what a surprise there, really? Wow. <sighs> Yawn. That was so boring. So boring. That was very boring. I served in the State Department in both Bush administrations, and I served in the United States House of Representatives for three terms, including as the third highest ranking Republican in House leadership. So. Hey. Leave jail for it alone. After all, he became quick friends with Homer Simpson and asked him if he liked drinking beer and liked watching football. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> jail Ford. He didn't want the job, but boy, howdy, did he get it. <laughs> In other words, I was a Republican even before Donald Trump started spray tanning. Here, hold on. If we're going to do a laugh track, we're going to do this properly. <laughs> oh, yeah, she said something about Orange Man bad. Oh, my God. Democrats, you know, I, 
a part of me is really hoping to see your downfall. I am a Ronald Reagan conservative. I believe in limited government. I believe in low taxes. I believe in a strong national defense. So that means all you liberals and progressives, shut up. Follow orders. You don't have a seat at the table. Kamala Harris is a Liz Cheney Democrat. Liz Cheney is a Kamala Harris Republican. That's right. Don't correct me. I know what I said. And I believe that the private sector is the engine of growth of our economy. I believe that the family and not the government is the most important structure in our society. I know that our security and our freedom depend upon a world in which America with our allies leads. And above all else, I know that the most conservative of conservative values is fidelity to our constitution. Yes, fidelity to our constitution, which nobody in Washington, D.C. believes. And of course, Kamala was more than happy to jump on board. The president of the United States must not look at our country as an instrument for their own ambitions. Our nation is not some spoil to be won. The United States of America is the greatest idea humanity ever devised. Wait a minute. Are you saying that's better than sliced bread, the wheel, fire, indoor plumbing, Taco Bell, antibiotics, internet? What? What? I guess the concept of it. But uh, hey, United States, great idea. But you want to know what else? Hey, here's a good idea. Let's give billions of dollars to war and give only 750 bucks to Americans. But oh, wait, they got to get on the Internet to get it. Oh, wait, they're going to be denied by it. And Oh, wait. Hey, uh oh, here comes BlackRock and Vanguard buying up everybody's property. That's a great idea. Hey, let's sell our politicians. Brilliant idea. Let's do it. Hey, but what about the people? Should we care about the people? Do you want to know what Kamala says? The people! Great idea! Brilliant! Brilliant! Hey, you want to have a great idea? Hey, let's 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 appoint somebody as a nominee and say that there was a free and fair democratic primary. <laughs> the nation that inspired the world to believe in the possibilities of a representative government. And so in the face of those who would endanger our magnificent experiment, people of every party must stand together. President of the United States. So with all of this being said, with Cheney's daughter there, with Kamala there, do you think this is going to be one hard-hitting coalition? Do you think that's going to inspire people to vote? Well, let's go ahead and fly on down to Philadelphia in the great state of Pennsylvania and find out Latino voters in Philadelphia shift towards the GOP. Hey, wow, turns out that's blown up in your face, Democrats. So deep in your face, you'd be like, oh, my God, I can't dodge it. I can't dodge it. Because Latino voters are leaving. I think there's a real possibility this thing's going to come down to our blue wall states, come down to Pennsylvania, might come right through this restaurant. Basically, what it's going to do in this thing. The road to the White House runs straight through Pennsylvania. See, there's a wallism for you. It may run right through the restaurant. Maybe it will. Who knows? <laughs> Jen Saki. Oh, you got your finger on the pulse there, you moron. The key, though, to a Democratic victory there is Philadelphia, where nearly 20 percent of the state's Democratic voters live. But the Philadelphia Inquirer has this really interesting report out about working class voters in Philly. Once a key Democratic base are now increasingly leaning Republican, largely, according to this reporting, because of the impact people are feeling there of rising prices and a nostalgia uh, from the Trump era. I mean, this is a messaging push straight from Trump himself for the pre-COVID era when he was president. It's not on the level 
but people are buying it. I mean, and this piece also notes that the I know people are buying it. And why? Because maybe, I don't know, Biden and Kamala didn't deliver on their promises. Bernie, that cuck and AOC, that Nancy Pelosi 2.0 wannabe failed to deliver with their promises. And the American people got screwed over and the economy kept on going under. And now we're stuck in these ridiculous wars that could lead to the potential of World War Three happening. I, I don't know. And I'm not saying Trump's going to make things better because I doubt that. But it's understandable why are people are looking around. And then also finding out, hey, our president, he doesn't know where he's at, man. Where am I? Who are you? Ice cream. The shift began back in 2020 when Democrats lost ground in neighborhoods where education levels were lowest and poverty rates were highest. And this trend cuts across racial lines, but is most prominent in neighborhoods that are predominantly home to Latino voters, which is the fastest demographic group in the city and one that is also across the country moving in some ways more Republican. Joining me now is Layla Jones, economic equity reporter for the Philadelphia Inquirer, who's co-bylined on that new data-driven Inquirer piece, uh, which I think is so interesting. It's such excellent reporting. And it's important for people to really understand what voters are saying out there. So thank you, Layla, to you and your colleagues for doing that. And thank you for being here with me. So I just, I gave a quick summary there of some of your reporting that shows neighborhoods in the Philly suburbs where lower education levels and higher there are high, lower education levels and higher poverty levels are some there's some trend toward republicans i as i said i outlined a bit of the oh jen saki come on come on you don't you gotta be careful with your words here because the next thing you know be like jen saki say like what lower income neighborhoods undereducated what do you mean gee jen maybe if you look at democratic policies and what's happening in those neighborhoods i don't know shining a light on it shining a light uh in the state that's predominantly blue why? 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 Jen, listen. Listen, you were part of the Biden administration. You, and you know you're a press secretary, but I, 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 my standards are this high for you, Jen. Don't make them dwindle down. The reasons why. But you tell us, you did the reporting, what you found as you talked to voters. What we found was that, like you mentioned, a lot of the reasons people were citing for their shift kind of to the right was because of the economy. They felt that they were doing better under Trump's presidency than they had under President Biden's uh, administration. So we found that in 2020, actually, Biden performed worse than Clinton in more than half of the city's wards. Uh, this trend is across races. There are white working class neighborhoods that have moved right. Black working class neighborhoods that have moved right. But like you said, the largest shift has been in Latino neighborhoods. I do also want to note, though, that there have been shifts to the left in more educated neighborhoods. Uh huh. But why is it that a lot of the neighborhoods that are predominantly Democrat or were Democrat leaving? Because if we look at Chicago, we're seeing a pushback against the machine, the likes of which I've never seen before. People are upset at the Democrat failures that are happening, especially in a lot of inner cities. So why is it happening? It's because the Democrats' messaging has been called out and nobody's inspired to really help out or support the Democratic Party. Yeah, it's really interesting. The, the educational divide we saw back in 2016 and some of your reporting, as you just noted, talks about this trend going back in tw to 2020. And one of the things you just referenced really stuck out to me. You say in the piece, quote, in some areas, voters increasingly cast ballots for Trump and others. Democratic vote totals declined because turnout did. Fewer people showing up in blue strongholds is effectively a gain for Republicans. So kind of as you're looking based on your reporting to 2024 and the election that's 33 days away, are you hearing more people, if they're shifting, shifting to Trump or maybe does, don't want to show up? Or what is the trend you're hearing more of from voters at this point? I think the overall trend that I have heard has been more about disengagement in general from a lot of the voters than going toward Trump. You know, in Philadelphia, it is still a Democratic stronghold. Uh, voter registration does still outnumber Democrats to Republicans by about seven to one. Uh, so rather than people shifting to the right from the voters that I spoke to, what I am hearing more is that they just don't feel engaged by the campaign. No, and they shouldn't. And the rest of that is going to be a little bit of a snore fest because you, the audience, deserve something. 
Because the thing is, there's a reason why the Democrats are losing. There's a reason why. They're trying to bring out Liz Cheney as being the end-all, be-all. And Donald Trump was quick to call, call them out on it. Trump, in a rare case where I'm going to probably agree with you, at the same time, too, you know, I, again, I'm not really expecting much from any politician, but I couldn't stop laughing with this. Day with Liz Cheney. Your thoughts on that? Well, Liz Cheney lost for Congress. Uh, she was terrible. Liz Cheney is a stupid war hawk. All she wants to do is shoot missiles at people. I really think it hurts. I think, frankly, if Kamala, I think they hurt each other. I think they're so bad, both of them. Okay. <laughs> Trump is no better, but God damn it, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's a stupid moron. She's a stupid freaking moron. That's my Furio from Soprano. Stupid freaking moron. Stupid freaking car. But this is also costing, because here's the thing. Even then, as we speak, we know for a fact that Kamala Harris is not only losing black voters and Latino voters, but I've mentioned before on the show that she's losing Arab and Muslim voters, most notably, again, to the uncommitted volunteers. All right. I'm not talking to the leadership, but to the uncommitted volunteers, right? Your leadership is leading you down a road of despair because as it stands right now, the Arab and Muslim vote is tied between Trump and Harris. Now, this is unthinkable. But is Kamala Harris that piss poor that these are the numbers that we're seeing? Huge shout out again to Case Study QB. I'm going to pull this up here. Just for our audience to know that there is a new Zogby poll out that shows that the Arab and the Arab and Muslim vote is now tied. That has not been the case for a long time. Arab and Muslim voters had become primarily Democrats, having used to have been a sort of Republican leaning constituency. That's where they are right now. This is uh, James Zogby was an excellent uh, John Zogby was an excellent pollster, one of the best. Forty two. These are insane numbers. The fact that it's got to be tied like that. Now, again, what's going to matter is who turns out to vote on election night. But the fact that the Democrats, your candidate is so terrible that these are the numbers that she's able to crap out. What what leg do you have left to stand on? You Your shield wall is breaking. You're losing Latino voters. You're losing black voters. You're losing Arab and Muslim voters. You're losing women voters. You're losing white voters. You're losing everybody, Democrats. Your coalition is fracturing. If you guys win, it will be by the skin of your teeth. That's it. 41, trending tiny a bit toward Trump. And there was another uh, uh, thing in that poll that showed um, something pretty extraordinary that goes to what Juanita said, that had there been a Palestinian-American speaker a, a, a large plurality of those voters tell Mr. Zogby that they would have more than half of Arab Americans said they would have been more likely to support um, Vice President Harris had the DNC allowed a Palestinian American speaker. So I want to put a. Ha! Wait a minute. In that for a moment. Hold but on. On the point um, that Hold Juanita was words. just making, Jelani. You're telling this me. Coalition well, combo so, in other words, Democrats, because we're going to rewind that, we're going to YouTube rewind time. So in other words, Democrats, corporate media, what you're telling me is this. I'm trying to get the facts here. I'm interrogating you. So shut up. So what you're saying to me is that if the uncommitted people were actually given a chance to speak at the DNC convention, that maybe the Democrats could have had it in the bag and had more support and more voters come election night. Wow. Wow. Who would have saw that coming, but yet uncommitted. The, the leadership, not the volunteers, they still say, oh, yeah, we'll still support Kamala. Oh, please, Democrats. Turns out maybe the smart thing to do was to actually, you know, maybe listen to the progressive base, the independents, the activists, the organizers. Maybe not build a huge wall and block off the convention center. Maybe if you actually engaged. But, oh, hold on, wait. These are the same liberals who were laughing and mocking at protesters when they were named the names and the ages of the young children dying in Gaza. Brilliant move, Democrats. Everyone in the live stream chat. Round of applause. Woo! Yes, BS DNC, you did it. Big brain tactics all around, man. 
Big brain. Big brain tactics. Oh, gee, Kit, you just don't know about politics. Democrats got a plan. Oh, they got a plan to see why they're losing so many people. Listen, Democrats, liberals, for your mind's sake, you better hope that Kamala wins because you guys are due for a meltdown. It's going to be funny. It's going to be funny if they, if they melt down. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be feasting, feasting on your souls. A Palestinian-American speaker, a, a, a large plurality of those voters tell Mr. Zogby that they would have more than half of Arab Americans said they would have been more likely to support um, Vice President Harris had the DNC allowed a Palestinian American speaker. So I want to put a pin in that for a moment. But on the point um, that Juanita was just making, Jelani, this coalition cobbling means that they're trying to pull all of these pieces together. The Palestinian American and Arab American piece is not holding necessarily. And so you do have now um, uh, Tim Walls speaking to the Muslim American coalition today. That's the other thing that's happening at this time. He's out speaking to that constituency, trying to grab them and pull them in. But, but talk a little bit about the risk assessment part of this, because for Democrats, they have to keep this whole coalition together. And the threat that we're facing is Project 2025 and unleashed Donald Trump, unleashed police, unleashed death penalty. The things he's threatening to do are so catastrophic. His seizure of the federal government is so risky. That's why people are putting up with it. Hold on. I'm mean, hearing some copyright music in the background. Let me fast forward a little questions bit. Questions about you know, how people can position themselves, uh, especially being right there in Minnesota. Now, the other part of this, I think that's significant, is that I think people did not anticipate, you know, that vote breaking down, you know, the way that it has uh, in Michigan. I had a. We're gonna pause here. So, in other words, the guy doesn't know why the vote is breaking down. Maybe it's because early on, Biden and the Democrats uh, gave a middle finger to the Arab and Muslim voters in Michigan. Uh, and again, in Michigan, there's a large Arab and Muslim voting populace there. And, you know, hey, color me shocked, but uh, they, they know people, relatives, family members that are either deceased, injured, or they're hopefully still alive in Gaza. And they're wondering, hey, can you do a ceasefire? And Biden says, no. They ask it for Kamala. They say no. They ask to speak at the DNC convention. DNC convention told them no. So let me get this straight. Kamala Harris has... All of corporate Democrats from Bill Clinton to Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama. She's got Liz Cheney and Dick Cheney. She's got all the neocons and neoliberals. So in other words, Kamala is just anointed by the political establishment to carry on things as is. Huh. And yet they're shocked that it doesn't inspire Latino voters. Black voters, Arab voters, white voters, Asian voters, men or women, they're surprised. They're, they're shocked. It's because your policies suck, Democrats. Maybe it's because you guys suck. You suck. You're terrible at this. You don't know what you're doing anymore. But it's all right. You know, hey, if you guys want to keep on losing and failing miserably, that's on you. But I am not surprised by the absolute, uh, pathetic actions in which the Democrats are trying to get people excited. You want to know what's really going to cause you Democrats to lose? Your lack of concern for the people. As I speak right now, the people impacted by the hurricane get nothing. All across this country, the American people are being ignored and dismissed. And yet somehow, we're supposed to assume that you guys know what's going on. Yeah. What's What's, what's more exciting to engage voters? Actually follow through with policies and campaign promises or being like, hey, and for the next neocon to support our neoliberal puppet, give it up for Liz Cheney, daughter of Dick Cheney. You know, the guy who was really pushing really hard for that war in Iraq, right? This is the failure of the Democrats. Their failure has come full circle. Now they're all in. So what's the difference between voting Democrat or Republican? There isn't one because one never existed in the first place. The great lie is being revealed. They're all friends with each other. It's one big club and you ain't in it.